to ruin our lovely weather. Makes yeah, a change. Have, have good weather too over there at the moment. Yeah, it makes a change. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, for the past week we've had at least some mid twenties. Yeah. Which is really good. Yeah, Three hundred days awesome. rain, but yeah, I can't complain. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, we had a few, few, uh, few days of really nice weather here as well. A couple of twenty degrees and uh, sun for the most part. A little bit cloudy, but um, not really rain during the daytime. So it's been been really nice the last uh, last couple of days. It'll come, I'm sure. Uh, what? The rain will come, I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so most people will have recognised you as the founder of Serenia, Tristania and Mortemia. Now, obviously the three of them overlap the symphonic and gothic metal style of music. But talk about your actual project, Mortemia. How does that differentiate from Serenia and Tristania? Um, Marchemia was uh, kind of like a solo project that I started um, 11, 12 years ago or so. Um, I released uh, one album called um, Messer Marchem uh, back in uh, 2010, I believe it was. Um, and uh, the concept uh, that I had from the beginning um, was that I wanted to do um, uh, like, like a split, you know, between uh, my roles and, and the choirs. Um, and um, there was no uh, female vocals um, on that first album, um, just the one voices um, uh, being part of the choir, of course. So that was like the, um, the concept, uh, vocal concept. Uh, to, so that kind of, you know, sticks out from uh, um, both what I used to do with uh, Tristania before and, and also what I've been doing with uh, uh, Serenia. Um, and after that, um, not much happened really. Um, uh, I was, you know, so busy with, uh, with my main band, uh, Serenia, that um, I couldn't really find the time to, um, to kind of follow up with Mortemia. Um, and it was actually uh, during the, um, the pandemics that I realized that I had had uh, you know plenty of time uh, more or less you know so so that's when I decided to to do something with uh, Mortemia again as we, we just a few months back we released a new Serenia album and everything and you know we're kind of ready to go on tour but the situation doesn't really allow it so I had a, a lot of time on my hands all of a sudden and I decided to um, to get busy with uh, Mochenia again and uh, this time I, I changed up the, the concept a little bit though um, so for um, uh, the pandemic uh, pandemonium sessions as, as the project is called uh, I decided to uh, to base the vocals on a, this time on a split between like 50-50 between my own roles and uh, the other part, um, I decided to uh, invite uh, a special guest uh, uh, singer to do uh, the other part. And uh, the idea is to have um, a different singer for each of the songs. Um, and, um, you know, basically inviting um, uh, friends, you know, that I've known in the, um, in the music uh, for quite some time and also some of my own. Uh, favorite singers uh, in metal, so um, it's a very, very exciting uh, and, and interesting uh, project uh, to work with. Um, and I released the, the first song like three weeks ago, um, and my special uh, guest for that particular song was uh, Madeleine Le Lisbon from the band uh, Elaine. And I guess the way, because obviously reflecting on the whole pandemic, where Let's be honest, the whole world shut down. Um, band obviously wouldn't be able to tour, like you said. And of course, now you're reflecting back on your own solo projects, you feel that um, the, the, it's an irony that despite the chaos, the COVID pandemic, 
has caused the world, that new opportunities have arisen as a result? Do you think it's kind of an irony? Kind of, yes. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the pandemic as a whole, you know, it has been like 99% of it has just been awful and terrible, you know. And, uh, but in my case, you know, I, I wanted to, to at least try to do something with this time, you know. Uh, you know, we can't really do much with the situation being what it is, you know, so we, we can't really change that. And, and we're, we won't be able to go touring still for for some time. Uh, I don't really have expectations of, of playing any concerts this year. So so mm -hmm. we're based, if, if something happens, you know, towards the end of the year or something, I will we'll take it as a big bonus, you know. Um, I think realistically we are looking at next year, you know, for, mm -hmm. for setting up shows again. and. Uh, and for sure, yeah, I decided, you know, to, to try to make something out of this uh, this awful period, you know, two whole years without touring and all that is, it's terrible for, for a musician, you know, um, especially, you know, full-time musician and, and all that. So, um, you know, yeah, from the beginning, as I, I just, you know, sat down and began to think and what can I do with this situation uh, I wanted to use it in, in a most uh, creative way as possible and try to do as much work as I can uh, looking at other things you know so it's been this period you know with the COVID um, I've been learning you know um, a lot of new things you know basically things that I didn't really have, have time to, to look into uh, before you know because uh, the schedule was was so tight, you know, and, and we were just pushing forward uh, the whole time. And um, but with this pandemic now, I, I all of a sudden found time to do all these things that I, you know, kind of really didn't have time for before. So uh, it's been um, I'm really you know kind of happy that I was still able to do something uh, creative out of this awful period, you know. And of course, like you said, that's when you revisited your your older project, Mortemia, and of course brought out the new single, Enigmatic Sequel. Obviously, reception from your fans and people around the world in, in the industry would have been you know, spectacular, saying how well, well, really, really good it was. As a musician, are you surprised at where metal is going in terms of how many? countries now seem to have metal bands emerging and at least fans emerging as well yeah I think it's really uh, it has been for me you know a really nice journey to be a, a part of you know I started my career as a metal musician uh, in the mid 90s around 94 or 95 I believe um, and you know back then it was you know metal was was kind of an underground thing, you know. We obviously had had big bands, you know, like Metallica and Black Sabbath and and, and that kind of stuff. But um, for 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 the rest, it was pretty much like an underground thing. And I also remember back then, you know, we we started early with also having you know keyboards, orchestrations, and female singer in our band. And, and back then, you know, there was hardly any women in, in metal at all. There was, there was so few of them, you know. And even I remember uh, when I was searching for a singer uh, for Serenia in the, in the very beginning, uh, like early 2000s, it was really, really hard to actually find uh, a female singer, you know, that kind of wanted to uh, go for a career in metal music. Uh, it was really, really hard. Uh, but when you look at the situation today, you know, it's there's so many fantastic mm -hmm. female singers out there, and so many bands um, popping up everywhere. So um, you know, it has been really interesting and, and nice to be part of that journey from the very beginning and up until now, and, and see uh, um, you know the, the genres of metal that I'm you know kind of more or less working in, and see how how big they have become uh, mm. over the years. Well, yeah, because if we take the whole 
symphonic and gothic metal so I mean obviously the two the two are intangible because you've got symphonic metal that can be used with power metal, death metal etc so forth but symphonic and gothic metal seem to have that sort of romantic partnership going on so when you're looking at bands like so for example uh, Tristania, uh, Serenia, Epica, with Temptation you know arguably these bands have gone beyond the metal world they're now into sort of the mainstream as well, would you say? Yeah, there's definitely, uh, you know, some bands in the genre that have, have made it, you know, really big. Uh, you know, for example, bands like Evanescence and, and Nightwish with mm-hmm. Invitation. Um, uh, it, you know, it's like unbelievable how how great of a success they have um, working in this uh, kind of genre, and I think. As, at least <laughs> back in the early 90s when I started out it was uh, you know it seemed like it would be totally impossible to uh, to achieve something like that you know it was uh, more of an underground thing you know and um, you know basically playing small uh, small clubs and, and, and venues and all that and uh, yeah so it's been a very interesting journey seeing how how big the genre actually has uh, has grown. Um, I mean, most of the bands, you know, still kind of working in a in a, in a different um, uh, level, so to say, than than these huge bands that I uh, just mentioned. But uh, but still, the, the genre in, in general has really grown a whole lot, you know, since since back in the nineties. The overall attitude to metal in Norway, as somebody who's obviously you've you know see, seen a lot grow up in terms of the metal scene, talking about the time of 1992 when the Fantos Stave Church was burnt down. Obviously, that was a huge um, event in Norway, not just for music but for many many reasons. Would you say? Well, tell us how. The attitude towards metal has changed since then. Yeah, I think <laughs> back then, you know, in 1992 or or when it was, if I remember correctly, around that around that time, you know, um, when all that thing with the uh, with the black metal scene and the church burning and all that uh, came um, on the news and so forth, it was like, uh, you know. People looked at, at metal and, and and rock and basically these genres, and you know they looked at us uh, like you uh, know <laughs> terrible, terrible people, you know, and it was like more or less the devil's work, the whole the whole thing, you know. And uh, I believe it took really a long time for people to um, kind of change their view on that, and I. Believe that still to this day there's uh, a good amount of people that uh, look at metal musicians as uh, uh, spawn of the devil or something, <laughs> something like that, you know. So uh, it's, it's definitely been a reputation that has been hard to to get back on its feet. But but you know, today metal in Norway is um, is so huge and it's the genre that um, I believe um, is the biggest export article uh, in Norway when it comes to music, uh, metal, at least it was a few years ago, I'm not sure if it still is, it, I think there's a good possibility it is, so um, it's, and if for example when we wa- watch the Norwegian Grammys on television, you know, um, you have all these um, different uh, genres and Sometimes when you have a band like the Borg Gear um, being nominated in the metal genre, you know that the Borg Gear, for example, sells more albums than the nominees in the pop genre in all that. So it's a, uh, it's kind of a, uh, you know, it just proves how how big metal has become. But but still, it doesn't really get the respect it deserves in Norway and probably many other. Um, places as well. Yeah. Well, I say you say that because obviously you look at um, 
uh, countries like in the Middle East and you know Africa, where the, the countries where religion tends to dominate the whole uh, society, they have that sort of oppression towards metal music. So I think what they're feeling now is probably what the Norwegians felt in the metal scene in the 90s, to an extent. Yeah, back in, in the 90s, uh, I remember it was on, you know, pretty much on the front uh, page of every newspaper for for years, you know. It was, uh, and that, uh, you know, they, they were just writing about it the whole time. And <laughs> people, I believe, were so shocked, you know, and about this whole thing. So they were reading it also. They kept writing, and it went on for years and years and years, you know. Even though it was a, you know, just a small thing with, with a few very few bands involved, um, I think that pretty much um, every metal band kind of uh, kind of had to take the, the, the blame for it in a way. You know, but they didn't really distinguish between uh, the actual bands or, or 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 others or something like that. I think they pretty much just judged every every metal band in, in the whole of Norway. So to an extent they were used as a scapegoat for what happened? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Right, At least back. that's my impression, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we go back to your project again. Uh, my understanding is that you're going to release a single each month. So, when will you expect the next single in June? Um, the next single is scheduled, scheduled for the 18th uh, of June. So um, on this coming Friday, I will um, reveal the the title of the song and also announce my special guest for that song. So everybody who's listening to this, whatever time before the 18th of June, keep an eye out on Morton's Facebook page. Yeah, absolutely. There will be coming more and more news there. I'm, I'm updating the, um, the the pages pretty frequently for Mortemia, so uh, yeah, it's a good idea to check in there for for news. And I have many many great cool announcements coming up in the near future. So it's uh, it's a really exciting time, you know. And as I mentioned a bit earlier, it's uh, this has been so far, you know, an absolutely fantastic project to work on. So interesting, and I feel so uh, privileged and honored to be able to work with with such talented uh, singers. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's all released through your own label. So obviously, Tristania, Serenia, with Napalm Records. What? decision did you make to go through your own label? At what point did you arrive? Yeah, it was something to try something new. Um, you know, also, you know, the way the whole business work has changed so drastically, especially over the last 10 years. Mm. Um, and so you can see more and more bands beginning to do it uh, themselves and and they're able to do it quite well you know with uh, today's so much I believe it's more than 90% of, of music today um, goes via digital domain you know mm. uh, so, so it's actually less than 10% which is uh, CDs and LPs and, and, and the whole format um, so you know, it's it's easier now to, to reach out to your fans. We uh, uh, have a digital world than it was, you know, like 10, 20 years ago when when the majority of the music was still going um, by CDs and, and LPs. You know, then you needed a much bigger apparatus with the distribution and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so for me, it's it's an exciting. Uh, project to try something new and, and to see how you know how this works out you know so um, it's I decided to do it for for this um, this album this project you know to test it and check how, how it works and, and so on and uh, then I will you know um, later down the road I will um, you know make a decision if if I want to continue that way or 
if I want to team up with uh, Rubin again for for future uh, Martenia projects. Of course, you mentioned the word album there, so I presume the uh, collection of singles that you're going to be doing across the months for the rest of the year will collate into an EP or an album? Yeah, actually, that is, you know, the plan, you know. Uh, at, at first, it was the, the, the main idea was just to do, um, to do the singles, um, and, but now I'm thinking about it and I already got uh, quite a bit of requests, you know, people asking if, if there will be an album or if there will be an LP and so on. So at the moment I'm thinking, you know, that by the time that I have like 10 or 12 songs, something like that, um, then I will also uh, put everything together uh, to an album and, um, and put some um, some CDs and LPs so, um, so the fans also have the possibility to get the, the physical uh, format. Of course, that's that's the sort of the paradox at the moment. We're touching on the whole digital aspects where people, sure, will go stream music, they'll go download music as a way of easy access. Obviously, that dries up the, the physical aspect, but then you tend to see people who listen to the digital stuff will then go, I want this and physical, and then they'll buy the physical. So, do you think it's sort of flipped on its head in a way? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it seems that less and less people are interested in the physical, but but you have the, um, the really dedicated fans uh, and the guys that are, you know, really dedicated to music, you know, they, they still kind of need, um, need that physical format, you know, they still enjoy that experience, you know, when with, with listening to the CD on a, on a very good stereo and also having the possibility to um, to read through the lyrics, you know, and check the uh, the lyrics, you know, as the song play, and, and that it's not, you know, like an experience, a, a thing, you know, in a way. And uh, I believe there's still some people, you know, also in uh, in in my generation, you know, that we, you know we're kind of used to that, you know, we, when we went to buy. Music. It was always uh, physical. You know, it was either uh, uh, a CD or a, or an LP. You know, and uh, so many of us are still clinging on to that. You know, and I think still some of the the young people as well. You know, the ones that are really dedicated, they really uh, still enjoy the physical format as well. And of course, that goes into the the other aspects of the physical size where. Um, you see, you can take your CD and your vinyl to a show, or a gig, or a festival, and get it signed by the band. You, I don't think a band would be very happy in signing your iPod, for example. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing, you know. And, and a lot of um, a lot of people like to to collect too, as you know. And uh, uh, a collection of downloads, it. Uh, it's, I believe it's quite not the same, you know, as to have a having a big shelf in your living room with with all your CDs and LPs and stuff. It's um, so there's also something there, I believe, with the um, with the collector thing. It's also sort of um, not 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 mainly mental, but people can reflect back on when an album was released. Like, oh yes, I bought this album from that show, or oh yeah, this album was signed by that band. Digital music, you know, is great on all well, the marketing and the business aspects, getting your music out. But in terms of the sentimental side, you can't beat CD or vinyl. Yeah, it, it certainly is, you know. And I think it it means uh, something, you know, for the fans as well. You know, uh, if they were to see one of their favorite bands in a concert and um, they they bought. Uh, the CD or the LP at the show, and and afterwards the the band signed it for them, maybe even with a, a, a personalized message or something like that, you know. And it's it's a memory they have for the rest of their life, and it's something that they can appreciate uh, later on as well, you know. So there is something, yeah, something valuable there uh, connected to the physical. Uh, you know that that isn't there with with the digital, I believe. 
And do you feel that with metal music as a whole, as a genre, that it seems to be a very inclusive or exclusive genre that no one is ostracised for listening to metal. It doesn't matter what race you are, what religion, what uh, gender you are, everybody's invited. Do you think that metal music above other music genres has that ability? I really do believe so. Uh, that's definitely my impression. And you know, I've been to so many uh, huge metal festivals and I think I never ever experienced uh, people fighting or making trouble or anything. Uh, you can have uh, 80,000 people and everybody is, is there in harmony, enjoying themselves and um, you know, enjoying music and having fun together. They're in and, uh, you know, you know, metal musicians and metal heads might have a bad reputation, you know, I don't know if it's because of the way that we dress or the way that we look or, or whatever, um, but um, there's definitely, um, I mean, metal heads are, seem to be very uh, tolerant and, and nice people and, you know, and it, it just proves, you know, by by the never being trouble at any of these metal events. And certainly, I in my you know 25 years in the business have never seen something like that. So, um, so that's uh, my impression. You know, is uh, it's fantastic. And of course, I'm on the inside. You know, and most of my my friends are metalheads anyway. But. Uh, but you know, I've been there over all these years and, and never saw anything negative kind of stuff. Okay, and going back to your project as well back again. So you've got a new single coming out on the 18th of June. Uh, do we know other dates in the future for other singles or is it just a month on month basis? Uh, the plan is um, on a monthly basis, yeah. So. Um, Somewhere in the middle of the month um, is the plan to release uh, the songs. So there will be like a month between between each of them. And um, at this point, if you <laughs> if it's kind of like when I set up the schedule and all and, and made plans for this, one month felt uh, felt right. And and but now it's like you feel it's it's it, one month takes forever. You know, it's uh, <laughs> I have uh, so many many great things that I you know want to share with the fans as soon as possible but uh, yeah I have to be patient myself as well you know and uh, wait <laughs> wait for this I think it's a good schedule anyway because it gives me the time to uh, to do the, the promotion and, and setting everything up right and, and, and so on with the releases and making sure that things are, aren't rushed or, or, or anything so I think it, it was a good choice with that uh, leaving like a month between each of the songs. Mm. Alongside your the single single releases for the upcoming month and for the rest the rest of the year and a potential E P slash album, uh, what plans do you have for the rest of the year? Um, I believe that the rest of this year will will uh, be spent mostly on, on working with uh, Botemia, you know, um, many of the songs are still not uh, finished and all that, so it's something that I'm working working on the, the whole time. And uh, also in between, I'm uh, working a little bit on some new uh, Serenia ideas as well. Um, so I believe most of the years will um, will be focused on this, um, and also we begin to. To look into touring possibilities for Serenia for next year, so I believe that will also take up um, a bit of time uh, later on. But uh, right now, at the moment, it's um, most of the focus are on this um, Martinian project. Well, thank you very much for your time, Morton. Yeah, it was my pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much, and stay metal. Yeah, you too, buddy. Take care. Tools and talk. <laughs> That's a good. You're welcome, mate. <laughs>